Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, we will continue our lecture series in this optimal control guidance and estimation course. Last couple of lectures we saw this optimal control formulation from calculus of variations and then we gave couple of examples which motivated that in general we need numerical methods to solve the nonlinear optimal control problems. So, let us see a couple of uh, such uh, techniques, numerical techniques. Uh, and then I mean we will follow it follow up with further things and all that which that way. All right. So, the topics covered uh, today in this lecture is first we just very briefly review the necessary conditions of optimality, then followed by we will talk about uh, two three methods and the first one is shooting method followed by gradient method and, and quasi linearization method. So, there are various other techniques as well, but uh, it is not uh, I mean it is not necessary to continue talking about all the methods, but you can after knowing these techniques probably you can see some literature or book or something and then follow the other techniques as well. Anyway, so let us get started. Let's say this is the generic optimal control problem that uh, we are interested in kind of uh, optimizing or minimize or maximize certain performance index of this form. Okay, and uh, along with the performance index we have this uh, associated path constraint as well as boundary conditions actually. Okay. So, the necessary conditions of optimality that we derived in, in previous lecture turns out to be like that. We have uh, a state equation which is x dot is L h by del lambda which is the f of uh, x u sort of thing which is uh, coming from the system dynamics stuff typically. Then followed by I mean followed by this co state equation as well which is lambda dot is minus del h by del x and both of these happen to be differential equations dynamic equations really. And then the, the third equation is optimal control equation, which is a static equation. For uh, our, from this equation, we are, uh, I mean, we should be able to solve for optimal control u as a function of x and lambda actually. Okay, so that is how it uh, develops. But for these two differential equations, we have these two boundary conditions as well. So the problem is, uh, I mean, well defined really. And you can see that uh, the state equation takes this, uh, I mean, initial condition. Whereas coasted equation takes the final condition. Okay, that is how it is. Uh, it lends up with uh, this two-point boundary valley problems, and then the, this two-point boundary valley problem should account for all these uh, these boundary conditions properly. Okay, and also remember that uh, if a solution does not satisfy any of these equations, any one of the equations, including the boundary condition, that means the solution is non-optimal. So we must cater for uh, all the conditions. Uh, we must cater for uh, all the conditions with equal emphasis actually. So, that is the point there. Okay. So, this uh, let us uh, get started with uh, 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 before getting started with some of these techniques, we also discussed in the last class that this state coasted equations are dynamic equation and it turns out that if one is stable, the other turns out to be unstable in general. Okay. The optimal control is a stationary equation from which you need to solve for control uh, and for which uh, we need to know the lambda. Unless we know lambda, we cannot solve it from here. Okay. And boundary conditions happen to be split. That is what I told you here that the state equation has initial conditions, uh, whereas co state equation is final conditions actually. And typically, because of this, the, 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 the state equation typically develops forward. Whereas the coasted equations should develop backward because you know the, the final condition basically. So that's that's why the co typically the coasted equation uh, we can integrate it backwards because we know the boundary condition at the final time. In general, I mean, the numerical techniques can circumvent some of these and then uh, then talk about forward integration about the equations and all that. We will just see that in a in a while actually. Okay, so this all this difficulty that the boundary conditions are split and if one is stable, other is unstable, things like that uh, uh, leads to this great difficulty of, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, complexity issues and all. And hence, uh, this per, this particular feature that we are talking about is also known as curse of complexity in optimal control. 
So, we will end up with uh, nice formulations, but as a, as a necessary condition, part of necessary conditions, we are leading towards this curse of complexity. And traditionally, this, uh, this uh, two point boundary value problems require computationally intensive procedures, and we are going to see some of these uh, classical techniques uh, in a while anyway. But ultimately, also remember that uh, everything said and done, it ultimately leads to this, this open loop control structure actually. Why so? Because ultimately, after we get the solution in iterative sense, we are getting a solution for a particular initial condition. If the initial condition is changed, then the solution is not valid. Okay. So, because of that, and uh, once the initial condition is fixed for all future time t naught to t f, your control uh, control strategy also gets fixed actually. So, because of that, this uh, this uh, has a feature of getting getting into this open loop control structure actually. So, these are the some of the comments and difficulties associated with that. All right, so let's proceed further and then talk about one particular method called shooting. So this is this is a traditional method, uh, uh, very intuitive obviously, but uh, but uh, it has its own problems as well. So let us see what is the philosophy first. And again, just to summarize, you have the state equation, co-state equation, optimal control, and boundary conditions. Remember, once I solve this optimal control equation, okay, del s by del u equal to zero. Then I can land up with this uh, u equal to psi of x and lambda. Okay, so in general, you may or may not be able to solve it in explicit form. Okay, if you do not have, you are not able to solve explicit form, then you have to solve using this uh, numerical techniques like Newton Raphson method or things like that. Right? But suppose many class of problems, uh, it is possible to solve u as a uh, explicit function of x and lambda. So let us assume that it is solvable either either symbolically uh, or numerically either way actually. Okay. Once you solve it, okay, you can, if necessary, we can put it back here in the lambda dot equation, and if necessary, we can put it back here as well. Actually, okay. so then we, this u will be eliminated from both the equations, and you you end up with x dot is nothing but x and lambda, which is a function of x and lambda, and lambda dot is a function of t x and lambda as well. Actually, okay. most of the time we will not discuss about x, this time dependency, but it is if it if it is I mean if it is there then it is not a matter of concern actually it can be handled directly as it is actually. All right, so this uh, boundary conditions uh, I told you that this is final boundary condition this is initial condition. So this strategy tells us that okay let us be little more inter intelligent and have a guess for lambda zero actually. Okay, so how about starting with a guess? And again, this I need to emphasize here that guessing a lambda zero value is not a trivial task. Actually, it requires a lot of uh, insight into the problem, or es essentially, it, it has its own uh, tricks and techniques how to guess this this lambda zero. And uh, one one way that I'll recommend probably is you can guess a intuitive control history. Okay, you 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 can guess from t naught to t f, and once you guess u naught, then you can probably I mean integrate this equation, state equation, because x naught is available and your control history is available. So, you can integrate from t naught to t f using that particular control guess control history, it is nowhere close to optimal in general. So, but use that control history because that is an intuitive control anyway. So, you can integrate this state equation from t naught to t f and get your x f and once you get your x f, then you can get this lambda f. And once you get your lambda f, then you can, uh, I mean, using this condition, then you can integrate this equation backwards from t f to t naught now, and that is how you get a guess value for lambda zero. Okay, so lambda zero is not a trivial task because of several several reasons like that, and one of the primary reason is lambda in general does not have any physical meaning. It it does have some some geometric meaning. We'll see that later, but uh, but even geometrically, it it only sense gives some sort of a direction meaning. It doesn't talk about magnitude meaning. So, and lambda is not a physical variable, we cannot talk about position, velocity, current, voltage, nothing like that. So, we cannot really have a good guess for lambda in general. However, control is a physical quantity. So, we can we can guess the control history from T naught to T f, maybe using some stabilizing controller, PID controller or just some heuristic controller from the problem definition itself. Okay. So, using that or even sometimes uh, I do recommend using zero control, if the system is stable, then simply start with uh, with zero guess history and and you can integrate the equation, the homogeneous equation and then get it xf and then get it backward actually, that is also a possibility. But again, these are problem dependent, once you start uh, working on a problem, you will select a particular guess section, all that. But, but the point here is uh, guessing a lambda zero is not trivial. Okay. 
So, give some special emphasis for, for guessing a good value of lambda 0. But once you guess it, okay, now remember now for a while you can ignore this and then tell okay, these two differential equations have a corresponding initial conditions available. Okay. So, I can take this initial condition and integrate these two equations forward, state and cost equation forward because u I have already eliminated in terms of x and lambda. So, these two are functions of x and lambda only. I have two differential equations, two sets of differential equation and two sets of initial conditions actually. So, I can use this and then integrate it forward. And then I will see that okay, once I land up there and t equal to t f, then that lambda what I am getting here and this lambda computed this way, okay, they, they may not be same and they, most of the time they will not be same. So, that is why we are telling like okay, but this integration process is something like shooting, I mean you are shooting a gun sort of thing towards a target and and finally, it lands up somewhere with lambda f, but this the, the goal point is somewhere here lambda f, I mean lambda f is del phi by del f, what it should be. And then we, we sense the error between the two and using that error we have to come back and improve this lambda 0 that is the philosophy. Okay. How do we do that? I mean see that before that this is the procedure here. So, you start with some, some lambda 0 okay. Okay, lambda 0 for first guess sort of thing and then start uh, integrating forward t naught to t f you, you land up somewhere and then lambda f star happens to be somewhere here. Okay. So, use this delta lambda f okay, what you have here. Okay, this de using this delta lambda f you have to come back and correct this lambda 0 1 okay, to lambda 0 2 and repeat the procedure. Maybe you will go slightly more closer or maybe you will overshoot next time probably like that actually, but the, but the iteration proceeds that way. Okay. So, to summarize guess the, guess the initial condition for the co-state first, compute the control at each grid point because once you have the in lambda 0 you have x 0. So, u 0 is nothing but function of x 0 lambda 0. Once you have u 0, you can get a u x 1 from here. Once you have x, I mean once you have x 1 and lambda 1 as well, once you have x 1 and lambda 1 integrating these two equations together, you can calculate u 1. Okay. And then if you once you have u 1, you can calculate uh, x 2 and, and things like that actually. Okay. All right. So, the compute the control at each grid point and then propagate the state and co-state equations and then calculate the final boundary condition and error in the co-state at the final time. Okay. And then correct the co-state vector at the initial time based on this error at the final time. That is that's why I told, told you and, and then repeat the procedure. Keep repeating the procedure until and unless this lambda f what you are getting from integrating this point is very close to what it should be. Okay. Then, you, then you tell okay everything is satisfied because I am starting with this initial condition of the state anyway and then I am satisfied whatever integration I am getting for wherever I started I landed up there and these two values are very close. So, this is also satisfied and I have used this control on the way anyway. So, this is satisfied and these two equation I am integrating a, as a part of the procedure anyway. So, all the conditions will be satisfied actually. Okay. So, little bit math now okay, how do you do that actually. Okay. So, this is what uh, I recommend that form a meta state vector x and lambda that means, uh, instead of talking these two separate equation we can always tell that as a function of x and lambda in a bigger state that we call as meta state vector because u is already eliminated from here. Okay. So, then this implies that the error in dj error in z dz is nothing but dx by d lambda okay. and this information is used in the linear equation setting basically. Okay. We will see that in a while. Okay, once I define this meta state vector, what is z dot? z dot is nothing but uh, lam x dot and, la and lambda dot which is nothing but if I go back to here, this is nothing but x and lambda sort of thing. Okay. So, this is what uh, it turns out to be f of z. Okay. So, and associated with that uh, z of t naught is now available because lambda of t 0 I have already guessed actually. Okay. All right. So, now corresponding to this differential equation which is non-linear, we can also obtain a corresponding linearized error dynamics which is uh, dz dot is nothing but dx dot uh, d lambda dot which is nothing but equal to del f by del z into dz using this Taylor series linearization ideas actually. So, we have this, uh, this meta state vector uh, differential equation associated with boundary condition and associated with this equation and, and boundary I mean initial condition, we have this corresponding error dynamics as well all these things we have to take advantage of actually. Okay. Now, if the, if you have a okay, the point here is this uh, the, we have a linear uh, linearized version of aerodynamics, but remember that del f by del z is not a constant matrix. Okay. 
So, this this matrix is certainly not a constant matrix, it is time varying matrix. So, we cannot write this closed form solution of e to the power a t and things like that, we cannot do that actually. Okay. So, what, what is the uh, usual way of time varying linear systems? Uh, we know that it is it can be written in the form of state transition matrix. Okay. So, we have this uh, this linear equation here, okay. but this is a time varying matrix involved here and because of that the solution turns out to be something like that. So, d z at any point t j is nothing but phi of t j t i and the corresponding value d z of t i, okay. that is how it proceeds this way. Okay. Now, if you have this form, okay, that means you if you know the error at any point of time t i, you can calculate at any point any other point of time t j basically. Now the corresponding equation of the state transition matrix turns out to be phi of t j t i. And the dynamics and initial conditions, okay. Now we have now that we have written in this form, we need a solution or need a number for this matrix actually. So, this is very standard uh, linear equation systems uh, theory. And then if, if you write a state transition matrix, the same state transition, I mean the state transition matrix uh, in general will satisfy the same differential equation, okay, whatever differential equation you have, but in the matrix sense. Remember, dz is a is a vector where phi is a matrix. Actually. But the differential equation turns out to be exactly same. Okay. I mean, so exa exactly in the same form, basically. So you can take this dfi dz and plug in here; it will satisfy this equation. Anyway. Okay, and then you have this phi of t zero t zero initial condition is is invariably identity. Okay, if you see this equation, if it is t zero and t zero, both are same, then this has to be identity actually. Okay. So, this have a so what is the beauty here that uh, irrespective of the problem definition okay, or irrespective of the initial condition of the problem, this particular phi can be obtained independently actually from, from any t naught to t f. This is a differential equation and this is a corresponding dif I mean initial condition. Well, uh, we need the information of del f by del z also on the way. So, that way it is coupled in a way where you are talking about in which segment you are talking about but the value of df by del f by del z can can vary depending on that basically. But those uh, details is I mean aside what is what happens is uh, you have a uh, state transition matrix and uh, with and the corresponding initial conditions actually. So, this uh, system of equation can be integrated and you get phi of tz ti okay. So, get proceed further actually. So, what what the uh, what it tells us is you can now integrate this equation with corresponding uh, I mean I mean, I mean corresponding state transition matrix equation as well okay. and from T naught to T f and then you can start solving the solving for the optimal control equation actually okay. because once you once you once you know this actually okay, then your solution is almost ready because you you know this uh, I mean d z okay. once you know this d z of T i then you can I mean you can proceed further and then you can integrate this equation also in a way. Okay. Once because this this equation and the corresponding initial conditions are available. Similarly, this equation and corresponding initial conditions are available. So, this set of equation along with this set of equation can be integrated forward. Okay. Once you integrate it forward, then you can uh, you can compute this this thing okay, at any point of time basically. Okay. All right, just using this differential equation, uh, just just using this algebraic equation, because this solution of this is now available from this this, this set actually. Okay. All right, so this is the thing, and then finally, what we'll get, we'll get uh, okay. okay. Finally, what we are getting, we are getting something like this actually at t equal to t f, d j f. Okay, by definition is dx f and d lambda f and this is simply if you put it here you will get it phi of t f t 0 d z 0. Okay. Now, the question here is we are, we are actually interested in getting a value for d z 0 because what you know is d z f actually. Okay, ultimately, what you will know is uh, because lambda f will be will be embedded in lambda f I mean uh, uh, d z f will contain in the d lambda f term and using that we will be interested to calculate d lambda 0 that is the whole idea there actually. Anyway, so coming back to that uh, this d z f is calculated this way and hence in principle this d z 0 is nothing but this uh, this phi inverse t f t 0 d z f. Also remember state transition matrix are never singular and hence this inverse always exists actually. Okay. 
So, this is always possible to compute. Now, the question here is we do not want to perturb this d x naught actually right d x naught is fixed and we want to preserve that. So, invariably no matter what we get from this solution okay, that we do not want to consider that actually. So, d we consider this d x naught equal to 0 we are interested only in updating lambda 0. Okay. So, you can keep on doing that until some convergence happens and all that actually. But okay, this is fine. I mean, if you can into, you can implement this way. However, the, there is a small computationally we can, the procedure can be made faster by this uh, this idea. The you can uh, you can partition this uh, state transition matrix this way halfway, phi one and phi two exactly in the middle, okay, vertically. Then d z f turns out to be this way. You can write it phi one times d x naught plus phi two f times d lambda naught. Okay, you can. The, this equation what you are looking for this equation okay can we can we uh, I mean written in the form of phi 1 f dx naught plus phi 2 f d lambda naught actually okay now we are interested in forcing this uh, this uh, lambda dx naught is zero anyway that's what we just discussed in in here okay, okay. so because of that um, this turns out to be zero and hence we'll end up with this actually, okay so, what you are looking for is uh, now you tell okay the, for convenience we can think that h equal to some lambda f uh, be the vector of n boundary conditions at f that means the way that you compute the desired lambda f we can consider that as a function of uh, lambda f itself okay in gen okay, you can generalize this problem a little bit further i mean it can be simply lambda f itself it need not be a function directly actually okay so anyway so the what i mean is this this condition is available Okay, uh, let me see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this this equation, right? Uh, this equation, this is available. Okay. So using this, now you can think. Okay, I'll, I'll consider that. I mean, call that as h or something there. Okay, then you can tell. Okay, d lambda d. I mean, what you are having here, d z f is actually. Okay, is nothing but del s by del z into dz f. Okay. All right, so you can do that, and then that turn, turn, turns out to be a lambda f minus lambda f star, what it should be, and then you can substitute all that. Okay, and then tell okay, I, if I substitute it back here, okay, what I, what I'm getting here, okay, this dz f is, uh, I mean, okay, substitute back here, and then request it to, and then I can compute it this way actually. Okay. So, the whole idea, why it is so because uh, see, uh, see the here we think about uh, doing that directly then this will end up with a 2 n by 2 n the, uh, matrix inversion actually uh, lambda is uh, x is n and lambda is n. So, d z turns out to be 2 n by 2 n uh, 2 n by 1. So, phi turns out to be 2 n by 2 n. So, 2 n by 2 n matrix inversion is required, but here if you do this little bit algebra it, it requires that it is this happens to be n by 2 n and this happens to be 2 n by n. So, that that means you have end up with n by n matrix inversion only okay. and which is also logical because all that you need is n dimensional correction uh, the rest of the n dimension you do not need anyway this is fixed to 0. Okay. So, you do this operation and then this is mul just multiply these components together and then take the inverse and then you will be able to uh, compute it in a slightly lesser computational intensive way. Okay, so, it will just save the, uh, the matrix inversion uh, from 2 n by 2 n to n by n. Okay. Anyways, coming back uh, this is what it is. So, you keep on doing this exercise, you keep on computing d lambda 0 and correct your lambda 0 k to lambda 0 k plus 1 using this d lambda 0 okay, and then keep on doing that to repeat the procedure until convergence actually. So, this is how shooting method operates. Now, there are several problems in this method. Okay. First of all, uh, as you might have noticed that the, so this particular method is, is in general sensitive to the procedure. Uh, I mean the sensitivity of the procedure to the initial value of the state actually that, that becomes a major issue here and that is very apparent also. Like if you if you guess a wrong value of lambda 0, it turns out to be sensitive okay. and uh, you can if you are it can be very misleading also. But the fact is if, if your initial state equation is uh, or system dynamics is stable then the co-state is actually in, unstable. So, any amount of different lambda 0 that it then other than that uh, what it should be then you are actually integrating 
an unstable differential equation uh, numerically. So, the error is, uh, is going to grow very fast actually. Okay. So, that is why it is sensitive to that. Okay. So, in general the procedure is uh, sensitive to the uh, initial condition guess value. Okay. Second thing is uh, as I discussed cost tests do not have uh, physical meaning in general and this complicates the issue of selecting good initial values actually. Okay. And I have explained the procedure how do you do I mean how do you do a guess value uh, and it is usually done through guessing a control history rather actually. Okay. And invariably you will end up with I mean all these uh, classical methods and many of the numerical techniques you will uh, requires that you guess a sensible control history to begin with. Okay. Then you update on that, update on that like that actually. Alright, so this is what I already told. Cost state equation is normally unstable for stable state dynamics. Uh, hence, uh, in general, long duration prediction is not good actually. Okay. And suppose you have a unstable state, then then also you have unstable system dynamics. Then also you have a problem because anyway you are integrating the state equation forward as well actually. So either you integrate the cost state equation forward or integrate the state equation forward. If one is stable, the other is unstable, and hence everything is a very sensitive issue here actually. Okay. Anyway, so what is the solution to that? But this method is sensitive. So one way, some is the policy of divide and rule. You do not have p zero to tf because the integration error can blow very fast actually. And then all that you are applying here is linear philosophy. They don't forget that also. The error dynamics has to satisfy this linear equation or dynamics and all that actually. So as the as as long as the errors are small, then this dynamics is valid. Otherwise, no actually. So, be careful about that and so the one idea is okay, you, I will divide this segment time duration T naught to T f to some two segments let us say to, to begin with or it can be in general multiple segments. Okay. Once I divide into let us say two segments, okay. then I do not, I actually thought of I mean uh, what you what is essentially needed is uh, visualizing the problem as two different problems actually. One problem operates from T0 to T1, the other problem operates from T1 to Tf. But what it uh, the essentially the same idea is called multiple shooting because you are not shooting all the way, you are shooting in a piece, I mean piece piece sense actually, part part sense actually. Okay. Okay, but it also brings additional constraints of continuity and smoothness. So, even though this is only remember these are all artificial division actually, but the problem is not like that. Problem operates from T0 to Tf in a continuous sense actually. And the system dynamics are non typically non, non holonomic constraints and all that we discussed before. The system trajectory is not going to admit any any discontinuous or non smooth trajectory and things like that. Okay. So, it is our duty to enforce that wherever you are splitting the problem, okay, we need to guarantee continuity and smoothness. Okay. That brings in additional constraints actually okay, at, the, uh, at the joining points. And uh, this is possible, but it is also I mean do not uh, keep on uh, blindly applying and all that actually that is the message there. Okay. But this is the whole idea of uh, multiple shooting and most of the time uh, this uh, multiple shooting approach is also extended further and further and it the people talk about direct transcription method and all that we will uh, we'll see that uh, I mean later in this course actually. Okay. But anyway, so this is the whole idea of uh, shooting method as well as multiple shooting actually. Okay. Now, what about gradient method now? The, the second method, okay. remember we talked about we, we intend to talk, discuss three methods here actually. All right, so, now coming back to this, uh, what is happening here? I mean, the, the whole idea here is propagate the state equation and co-state equation forward in, in one direction, it uh, ultimately it means. But if you, uh, if you see these equations uh, as we discussed before, Ideally, the state equation should be integrated forward, whereas the co-state equation should be integrated back. And that feature is not there in the shooting method actually. Okay. Now, gradient method tries to exploit that feature, and hence, in general, gradient method turns out to be more stable actually numerically. Okay. All right. So, let us see what is gradient method here. First of all, okay. It, okay. The, it, the procedure is same. We start with the initial guess value of the control history, and then try to get the control history actually. Okay. So, with respect to the guess value of the control history, what you are assuming that if you if you use that control history as an optimal control solution, all, I mean in general, then we are assuming that that particular guess history or the the previously updated 
satisfies these three equations actually. The, it satisfies the equation, it satisfies the co-state equation, it also satisfies the boundary condition. What it does not satisfy is the optimal control equation. Okay. That is our assumption actually. Okay. And because these are assumptions, you I mean you will much better off by this value which satisfies these equations anyway. Okay. So, you start with a guess value which will satisfy these equations. Okay. And if you start with a state, I mean, if you start with a control history, okay, you start with some sort of a control history, okay, T naught to T f, whatever, okay, you start with a control history, and then you integrate the equation, state equation, anyway, right, using this control history. So obviously, the state equation is satisfied. Okay. Now you can calculate some co-state uh, final final co-state using that, and then compute it. I mean, I mean, come back actually. You just, uh, starting with that final condition of the co state, you integrate it backwards. So, the co state equation is satisfied. Okay. And you will you are starting with the initial condition of the state and you are using the boundary final condition of the co state anyway. So, the co state equations, I mean, the boundary conditions are also satisfied. Okay. So, so, the ultimate what remains to be satisfied is the optimal control equation actually. Okay. That is the whole idea there actually. Okay. So, Okay. All right. So the procedure is like this: you guess a control history, and then uh, start with the initial condition of the state, integrate it forward. Okay. Integ and then at the end, you calculate the co required co-state using the final condition of the co-state, lambda f equal delta phi del x, that kind of thing. And using that lambda f and and the co-state equation, now you integrate it backward. Okay. Then you will get the entire co state trajectory also. So, now state trajectory and co state trajectory as well as the previous control trajectory are available. Okay. The control trajectory may or may not be needed anymore depending on the iteration that you are talking about. So, using all these, okay, you will be able to solve for the required control okay, using, the using the state equation, I mean, this optimal control equation. Okay. So, this equation you are using it to integrate forward. This equation, you are, so, okay, let me summarize again. We are starting with a guess value of the control history. Okay. Then we are starting with a initial condition of the state. Okay. So using this state and that control, whatever guess control you are having, you can integrate it forward. Okay. Get an XF value and use that XF value and compute this uh, this lambda f. And once you have lambda f and uh, and the state trajectory also available, control trajectory also available for the entire duration. Lambda f is available. Hence lambda f is a function of only lambda. Are explicitly available and available so that you can integrate it backwards and get the entire lambda history. Now, once you have state history and lambda history for the entire duration, you can go back and see whether this equation can can be exploited further, and then you can if there is any error, you can correct that and keep keep proceeding that way actually. Okay. So that's the whole procedure of sorting method actually. Uh, sorry, gradient method. All right. So this is uh, this is the uh, procedure. Now, how do you do that? Basically, now we can go back to our uh, our derivation in the last class and then see the first variation of J bar. Okay, and the first variation of J bar is first expressed in this form, and hence we get all the necessary conditions. Right? We got lambda f equal to del phi by del x f from here. We got lambda dot equal to minus del s by del x from here. We got del s by del u equal to zero here. We got del x dot equal to del s by del lambda here. So this is what your, uh, I mean, what, what is our uh, first variation of J bar? Okay. Now coming back to here, the, we are assuming that the state equation is satisfied, co-state is satisfied, as well as boundary conditions are satisfied. That means uh, this equation is satisfied. Okay. This equation is satisfied. Okay. This equation is satisfied. This equation is satisfied. What? That's what I. Uh, uh, I mean, what is not satisfied is this one. So, uh, with respect to our, I mean, uh, the procedure, all these three are automatically satisfied. We, the, what is left out, is this this portion only. Okay. So, del j bar is nothing but this 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 one only basically. Okay. Now, I have to call, I have to compute a del u trajectory such that this del j bar has to go towards minimum value basically. So, using this, this this concept of uh, I mean gradient vector and things like that, a natural selection is del del u is negative of some some factor tau times del s by del u again. Okay. 
So, ultimately if I select it that way then del j bar turns out to be like this and hence it is guaranteed to decrease actually, del j bar is guaranteed to be negative. Now, the whole idea of this uh, this gradient methods in even in static optimization you have seen that before actually. Okay, so, so at every grid point uh, of time we will uh, we'll compute this uh, this delta u that way and then update this uh, this control trajectory like this, the delta u y of t is nothing but that okay, and that is already available okay, and delta u y of t we just computed it that way, so that is nothing but that. So, if I equate it to this two then you have my updated control history is nothing but that. Okay. So, any grid point at time I can I will be able to compute it that way. Okay, so, eventually if the procedure operates then uh, eventually it will keep, keep on decreasing and then finally, it will become 0 and when it becomes 0 okay, del s by del u will also become 0 because this is a quadratic form actually. Okay, this, this can be 0 only when this del s by del u equal to 0 that kind of philosophy you can bring in and claim that okay, if I operate the algorithm this way then del s by del u equal to 0 will also be satisfied at the end of end of the procedure basically. So, this is the summary of the procedure you can uh, have already explained this uh, 2 3 times assume a control history integrate the state equation forward integrate the co state equation backward and update the control solution. And while updating the control solution it can be done 2 ways actually ok one way is you can uh, you can integrate it completely backward ok ok you can integrate ok uh, well like let me just explain you can integrate it completely T f to T naught uh, and then update it. Okay, but if you really want uh, I mean T f to T naught you can integrate this lambda equation backward and then at a go you can update the control history that is that is a possibility or while coming back okay, in the backward integration procedure at every point of time you can update the control okay, the right there and then integrate it 1 delta T backward actually. Okay, then integrate then update the control there and with the updated control you can integrate it one more step backward actually. Okay, so, that kind of thing you can also implement actually. Okay, so, so, these are the two choices that you have there actually. Okay. All right, so, this is this, uh, this is what it summarizes and then you have to repeat the procedure until convergence and then convergence means this okay, I mean as soon as uh, this integral value is less than certain pre selected constant okay then you can you can assume that it has converged and you stop actually okay now the question is how do you select this tau fellow i mean this uh, tau factor somebody can select arbitrarily somebody can select one or initially one and later small value and things like that that is also possible but uh, one way of doing that is uh, okay, at every iteration we can assume that it it should reduce by some percentage alpha the j bar should reduce by certain percentage alpha. I will select a tau in such a way that will result in that. Then I will I, I have a j bar value computed already before ok. So, I take the uh, take the uh, some factor alpha is a, is a percentage so alpha by 100 is that ok. And then this one what I am looking at tau into that has to be equal to that. So, tau can be computed that way. So, that way it is uh, dynamic selected I mean different different values for iterations which will result in a in a pre selected value of uh, some percentage value reduction basically of j bar okay. that is one way but again the, I am not emphasizing that every time somebody has to use it this way okay. you can come up with own way of adjusting alpha as well always anyways there is a before proceeding further I thought we can uh, think about uh, some sort of exercise problem and this is actually a challenging problem in a way so this has uh, appeared in literature to about an 10 12 years back around uh, 2000 I believe 90, 90s and 2000 early 2000s and all that. Anyway, so this is the problem uh, of some sort of like a air to air missile sort of thing if there is aircraft to carrying a missile it keeps on going ok. Typically it can it, it is capable of firing a missile towards a target in front ok. So, if, if a target is actually in the backward uh, in the back side of the aircraft the typical thing is you do a cobra maneuver ok you kind of increase your angle of attack and as the drag improves uh, drag increase uh, and the speed reduces. So, you come back ok and then you reduce the angle of attack and, and then and then come down actually ok. If you increase the angle of attack the lift is increased so, aircraft goes up and the attitude also goes a little bit uh, I mean higher sort of thing 
and then the drag is also more. So, it comes I mean the reduces the speed and all. So, it comes back and then you decrease the angle of attack and then you are back side of the target and then you will be able to fire it actually. But in the procedure uh, the, there is a lot of uh, I mean time is critical in the such kind of applications. So, is it possible that you can still fire a missile in the forward direction, but the, the missile has to turn as soon as possible towards the backward and then engage on the target. Okay. So, the problem we are talking about is not engagement of the target that is a separate problem, but what you are talking about is from release to exactly turning out I mean turning in the back, backward direction okay, by 180 degrees basically almost. Okay, because this may not be exactly I mean uh, horizontal it can have some some positive angle of attack uh, I mean it can have some some positive gamma rather which is the flight path angle okay. it it can go a little bit uh, uh, I mean ascending sort of attitude basically and then it can releases okay then this has to turn in, in as less time as possible actually okay. All right. Also, a small comment. Uh, other cases can be considered as a subset of this extreme scenario. If you want to kind of predefined uh, some selected maneuver of not necessarily 180 degree, but anywhere lesser than that, then it's a, pre I mean, a subset of that actually. Mathematical perspective, it is actually a minimum time pro optimization problem, uh, but that is typically difficult, and we'll see that later. Minimum time problems are bank bank controls and things like that later. We'll see that. All right. Now, the system dynamics associated with that is, is given in this, I mean given like this, uh, is, uh, where I assume that uh, this uh, some of you will have this uh, appreciation of aerospace problems and this m is Mach number and then gamma is flight path angle, alpha is angle of attack, thrust is uh, I mean T w is uh, thrust and all that that way. But this is also in a normalized form okay, and there are various values, uh, various uh, variables are uh, given like this. So, the system dynamics is already in normalized form. Okay. So, tau is uh, these are derivatives with respect to tau where tau is uh, normalized like this okay. and T w is uh, thrust by weight okay. that is kind of a normalized thrust sort of thing. S w is like this and Mach number is uh, by definition normalized velocity of the vehicle divided by sound velocity. So, using this vari these variables okay, you have this system dynamics okay. and then uh, uh, I mean our objective is to minimize the time taken. Yeah. So, minimize the T f minus T 0 sort of thing actually and we have seen that that uh, the corresponding cost function we have seen that j equal to this so we can talk about T 0 to T 0 to T f let me here ok T 0 to T f 1 d T sort of thing. So, okay, T f minus T 0 it will become like that. Okay, so, we can do that uh, and uh, but in it is uh, done in a little bit different way a little bit uh, rather clever way we will see that way. But uh, also remember that due to certain uh, certain engagement requirement and all we cannot allow this vehicle to kind of uh, this missile to drop velocity far fast actually. So, it is at the end of the turning it should also have certain velocity so that it can engage with the target in a good way. Okay, so, and the because remember by while turning the this is also consuming thrust actually. And my frontal engagement it does not burn thrust, is it burns thrust initial segment and then proceeds with engagement and all that. So, we cannot afford to lose too much of energy because any turning also involves this induced drag and all that, it, it uh, results in a loss of energy. So, we cannot afford to do that. So, there is a constraint for that that M f has to be equal to 0.8 actually. Okay. But we will uh, instead of that equal to 0.8, we will tell approximately 0.8 is ok, then then this kind of a soft constraint is alright actually. So, you put that as a soft constraint it anywhere close to 0.8 is fine actually that is the meaning. <coughs> okay. But if k goes to higher and higher values then m f will go closer and closer to 0.8 actually and this part will guarantee okay, that minimum time is there T f minus 0 uh, that is T f has to be minimum actually. Okay. But this is done in a little bit clever way you can first use uh, with, uh, this is uh, instead of tau as independent variable we can think of gamma as independent variable and first write d m by d gamma d t by d gamma like that and remember this uh, 1 d t can be thought about something like this d t is nothing but d t by d gamma into d gamma and d t by d gamma is nothing but 1 by uh, I mean this d t by d gamma is available here. Okay. So, this express this uh, d t by d gamma this expression can be substituted here okay. and then this uh, m f minus 0.8 and all that is anyway available. 
So, the ultimately because this equation comes to the cost function where this equation becomes the system dynamics actually. So, we have a cost function in this form uh, subject to one scalar differential equation ever independent variable is gamma actually. Okay. So, this kind of is a scalar uh, sort of problem you can think about where the m is the only state vector okay. and gamma evolves from 0 to minus pi okay. and the, this expression has already come here to minim I mean in the in the cost function minimization part of it, it is already utilized. Uh, so, essentially you minimize this cost function subject to this first differential equation actually. Okay. All right, so, I will leave that here this problem it uh, the assignment sense uh, I, uh, I seriously request all of you to attempt this okay, using this some of these uh, typical numbers actually. You can see, see some of these parameter numbers you can use and use some standard atmospheric data at the altitude of 5 kilometer you have to select this uh, this atmosphere density okay, and then proceed with uh, all these numbers and then generate some results using uh, this uh, gradient method actually. All right. So, the last technique that in this class I want to talk about is, is quasi linearization. It is a completely different approach again and this is also has its own beauty actually. <laughs> All right. So, let us see that I will not talk about the optimal control problem in general here, <laughs> but we will uh, increase the complex I mean in generality sense we will in, uh, increase the generality little more actually. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, the differential equation in general we can talk about like this z dot equal to f of z t z is nothing but x and lambda taken together actually. Okay. Boundary conditions it is this includes a, a set of boundary conditions at different points of time. Okay. It can be only elisional final time it can also be something on the way as well basically. So, this kind of conditions are also possible for example, so some, some launch vehicle is there for going to moon then you first go to a parking orbit and then go to a moon actually right. So, that kind of thing it can be it can be split either artificially or naturally whatever way actually. So, the problem that you are talking about is this way z dot is f of z t where the boundary conditions are given that way actually. And we also assume that this vector differential equation has a unique solution over this time domain. So, the trick here is to this and this nonlinear multipoint boundary value problem now. Okay, it is not necessarily only two point boundary value problem. This nonlinear multi point multi point boundary value problem is transformed into a sequence of uh, linear non stationary boundary value problems. Okay. And the solution will be uh, found from there and then it, it will approximate the solution of the true problem actually. So, how do you, how does it proceed? We will uh, guess an approximate solution first okay. that is in uh, invariably that is a requirement. So, we guess an approximate solution z n of t n equal to 1 to begin with and then we have to update this solution and to update this solution we have to proceed this way actually. Okay. About this guess value whatever you have z n t we can always write a linearized system dynamics and that turns out to be like this where by definition delta z n is nothing but z n plus 1 minus z n actually. This is available with us either as a guess or as a previous solution and this needs to be found actually. Okay. So, this is like uh, as I told before in the shooting method this is like a time varying A matrix basically. So, you can always write it this way. Okay. Then we have to enforce the boundary conditions with respect to the updated solution. Remember the guess solution may not, need not have, but uh, while, while we update the solution our aim is that we should, we should update in such a way that the updated solution should satisfy the boundary condition actually. So, how do you do that because then remember this is the boundary condition. So, in this boundary condition I will substitute z n plus 1 here and then I will see okay, c of t i z n plus 1 uh, t i okay, inner product has to be equal to b i that is the condition. But now z n plus 1 I can divide into that these two because that is the by definition is like this. Okay. So, I can write that uh, this inner product is nothing but uh, minus this inner product plus b i because inner product can be split out actually this this uh, inner product of a and b plus c is nothing but inner product of a b plus inner product of a c. So, using that I will be able to split that and then I will be able to write that uh, c, c of t i and z n of t i this inner product is nothing but negative of that plus b i. Anyway, so what is where are we heading actually? 
ओके वील दैट विल बी अपरेंट इन ए वाइल एक्चुअली सो व्हाट इज व्हाट इज दैट फ्रॉम दिस डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन जेड डेल्टा जेड एन डॉट इक्वल टू दिस विल बी एबल टू राइट दिस वे डेल्टा जेड एन डॉट इज नथिंग बट जेड एन प्लस वन डॉट माइनस जेड एन डॉट सो जेड एन प्लस वन डॉट इज नथिंग बट जेड एन डॉट प्लस दिस इक्वेशन राइट दिस ए टी टाइम डेल्टा जेड एन डेल्टा जेड एन इज दिस वन बाई डेफिनेशन सो आई विल सब्सिट्यूट दिस टू एंड एंड आई विल राइट इट दैट वे सो इफ यू कैन इंटरप्रेट दिस दिस जेड एन जेड एन प्लस वन डॉट ए हैज दिस होमोजीनियस पार्ट ए ऑफ टी टाइम जेड एन जेड एन प्लस वन प्लस दिस फोर्सिंग फंक्शन एक्चुअली विच इज ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल विथ अस ओके प्रीवियस गैस हिस्ट्री प्रीवियस गैस सोल्यूशन इज अवेलेबल विथ अस और प्रीवियस सोल्यूशन और और गैस सोल्यूशन अवेलेबल विथ अस सो दैट इज अ फोर्सिंग फंक्शन एंड दिस इज होमोजीनियस इक्वेशन सो इफ यू रियली वॉन्ट टू सॉल्व दिस देन वी नीड ए स्टेट ट्रांसन मेट्रिक्स अगेन सो दिस दिस सोल्यूशन बिकॉज इट्स अ टाइम वेरिंग मेट्रिक्स वी नीड अ स्टेट ट्रांसन मेट्रिक्स ओके प्लस अ पार्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन बिकॉज दर इज अ फोर्सिंग फंक्शन ओके now the state transition matrix as we know it will satisfy the same differential equation with this boundary condition so this is this is clear we can uh, satisfy this in uh, this differential equation with this boundary condition so we can integrate it and then get some updated values and all that so this value will be available with us now what is not available is this one actually so let us see how do we get that for getting the particular solution you take the entire solution full solution and substitute it back in the original differential equation okay and if you do that this is uh, what you are getting this is the z dot sort of thing okay z dot is nothing but z n plus 1 dot and that is nothing but this kind of thing actually okay i mean this this entire thing basically so if you see this one z n plus 1 dot is nothing but this whatever comes out from here and remember this is a number this is not a function but this is a function and this is also a function so using that i'll be able to write this left side of the thing right side of the thing is anyway there okay this one plus this one okay so i am writing that now what is happening here is this equation getting satisfied here okay this uh, state transition matrix will uh, will satisfy this equation anyway so th this will get cancelled out actually the first term will get cancelled out so you are left out with this term in the left hand side where the right hand side will contain this one into that one here and this one into the entire thing here actually Uh, sorry this this is only for that so this one into this one which coming here and plus this one okay all right so this is uh, how we get for the the, uh, the differential equation for this but that is not everything you need also need a boundary condition for that okay so how do you compute that actually so that can be done this way that you go back to the this the z n plus 1 t 0 okay is given like this okay from here And you substitute t zero. Once you substitute t zero, this becomes identity, okay. And then this is equal. This becomes z n plus one t zero. This is z n plus one t zero. So this goes cancelled out. So this is left out. This is left out. So that is why you get it zero basically. So p n plus one t zero is nothing but zero, and p n plus one dot is available from this equation, okay. So this differential equation and this boundary condition, if I integrate, I'll get p p n plus one t as well actually. This one, okay. and i i if i solve these equations i get this one so now the solution is available basically this is that one so this is how the this uh, kajalian notation proceeds and okay the boundary condition for this can can be obtained this way the, you can put it the boundary condition is the result you have to use it actually right so you use it this way okay put it back and then ultimately it results in something like this actually this uh, okay, this solution you can put it here and then expand this inner product and take it that side actually okay. so if you solve this you will get a initial condition for zn plus 1 actually so then you can uh, i mean you can integrate this equation i mean you sorry the, you need this zn plus 1 t0 to get some get going basically so this zn plus 1 t0 if you know then if you know this and you know this then you are done zn plus 1 t0 is obtained this way from the boundary conditions okay now this one is obtained through this and this one is obtained through this differential equation with this boundary condition okay so that is how you get the solution like this actually all right so this is the summary of this uh, this quasi linearization method actually now this method is good under certain assumptions uh, which are uh, not uh, that harsh actually okay it can be shown that this sequence what you are getting uh, 
it does converge to the true solution and not only it does it not only it converges but also it converges at the something called quadratic convergence property that means it, it can be shown that this property holds good actually okay so that means it converges fast actually okay. remember newton raphson method of root finding typically uh, satisfies this quadratic convergence so this kind of routine also satisfies this quadratic convergence property actually more on that you can uh, you can see this actually Uh, see this also is very interesting that furthermore for a large class of system it can also be shown that it converges monotonically it does not overshoot and then come back and converge and all that is it converges from one side only actually which is even nicer actually. So even though the method seems a little bit more complicated and all that I will still recommend that you can uh, think of using this and then get a feeling. So this is the corresponding small assignment problem I mean uh, we have a again a scalar problem with a quadratic cost function and these are some of the necessary conditions and all that. So ultimately you land up with this state and this co-state equation in this form because control equation has been eliminated as a form of minus lambda and you have these boundary conditions as well. So you saw I, the task is to solve this problem using quasi linear quasi linear method. So I, I seriously suggest all of you to kind of uh, go to computer programming and then try to code these uh, algorithms and then have a feeling of uh, this uh, how these algorithms operate yourself actually. Some of these references for numerical methods I have taken from this and largely this uh, this gradient method and quasi I have taken from this book a very good book for, for classical solution of uh, opti optimal control problem. So, that is the D. E. Kirk book actually. Then all other things are available for uh, I mean uh, for especially the shooting method I you can see this okay, this is actually a good book also and okay, the two point boundary value problems it essentially meant for two point boundary value problems only actually okay. So, there are various various other things that the book talks about the entire book is meant for that actually. And again as I told in the very beginning class Bryson and who is always a standard book you can refer to many of the things there Sage and White is also a good book. And uh, these are some of this classical I mean very good uh, class well written papers rather it is a very old paper. And this is not that old, but it is also relatively old, but these are very well written papers where you can see a lot of these ideas there in a good way actually. That is all I wanted to talk in this, this particular class. Thanks a lot.